Hi, I'm Ryan Urbanowitz, and this is part 10 of Machine Learning Essentials for Biomedical Data Science. In this last video of the video series, we'll discuss automated machine learning, or AutoML, and how these tools are making it easier for anyone to apply machine learning as part of a data science pipeline. And for those who want some hands-on experience running a machine learning analysis pipeline that covers much of what we've covered in this series, I'll be introducing you to Streamline, an AutoML tool my lab recently developed that you can use today, regardless of whether you know how to program or not. Here's a quick reminder of the parts that have made up this video series. In the previous video, we covered other machine learning pitfalls and solutions. Let's start off by addressing the motivation behind automated machine learning. Over the course of this video series, we have sought to conceptually cover many of the key elements that can come into play in assembling a machine learning analysis pipeline with a particular focus on supervised learning in structured tabular data. However, as you have hopefully gleaned, there's no single correct way to assemble such a pipeline, but there are a number of pitfalls that should be avoided and best practices that should be adopted. Effectively, there are an infinite number of possible ways to reasonably conduct machine learning modeling or assembling an analysis pipeline as a whole, with questions like, how should the data be cleaned or transformed? What features should be engineered or learned? What features should be selected? What algorithm, model, or ensemble of models should we use? And what algorithm hyperparameters will yield optimal performance in training, with different options getting you closer or farther from obtaining an ideally generalizable or understandable model? Furthermore, the answers to these questions are likely to be different for every new problem or dataset. Previously, an analyst might have had to develop their own pipeline more or less from scratch, using some of the many packages out there, like Scikit-learn, that pre-implement individual pieces of the overall process, but ultimately leave it up to the researchers to figure out how to put these pieces together. This can be quite time-consuming, and the degree of rigor and effective avoidance of pitfalls can vary widely from one pipeline to the next. This is where automated machine learning comes into play. This is the process of automating the elements of applying machine learning to real-world problems. It can involve automating any number of the elements involved, and perhaps one day, as the field of artificial intelligence advances, maybe every single element, at least to some degree. Thus far, the primary aim of AutoML tools has been to make it easier for non-machine learning experts to make use of machine learning models and techniques in a more accessible and rigorous manner. Furthermore, AutoML has the potential to produce solutions more quickly that are simpler and yield better performance. Also, AutoML can facilitate a more rigorous exploration of machine learning model optimization. The elements of a machine learning analysis pipeline that are most commonly automated by current AutoML methods include hyperparameter optimization, model and algorithm selection, feature extraction, and some elements of feature processing, such as feature selection, feature learning, and feature transformation. Over the rest of this video, I'll mostly be mentioning AutoML tools developed by collaborators and myself, so feel free to take this bias into account while you're exploring AutoML methods for yourself. The first example of AutoML I'll mention is Teapot, a genetic programming-based AutoML framework. Teapot was one of the very first open source AutoML tools, and is to date still one of the most popular. It was primarily developed by Drs. Randall Olson and Jason Moore, and I was fortunate enough to be part of the first implementation as well. Teapot uses the evolutionary algorithm framework of genetic programming to discover and evaluate candidate machine learning pipelines as individuals of an evolving population. Recall from part eight of this video series, we previously introduced evolutionary algorithms as one element of rule-based machine learning methods. Each candidate pipeline is an attempt to determine the optimal combination of elements of a machine learning pipeline highlighted in pink below. These include feature selection, feature preprocessing, feature construction, model selection, and hyperparameter optimization. To date, the Teapot tool is still actively being expanded and improved. If you want to read more about Teapot, try it for yourself, or watch out for future improvements, check out the following link to its GitHub repository. Another AutoML framework that I had minor involvement with is PenAI. PenAI was originally developed at the University of Pennsylvania, also under the lead of Dr. Jason Moore. The primary goal of PenAI 
was to make it easy for non-computer scientists or analysts to easily apply machine learning to their data. Here we can see the different algorithmic components making up the system as a whole. However, a secondary ongoing goal is to create a system that could utilize past experience in analyzing different data sets to make better recommendations on other pipeline configurations to try out. Dr. William Lakava, pictured here, led this effort to develop a recommender system, which can learn more about at this paper at the bottom of the page. The idea was that with more experience, Penn AI could start to make better recommendations on how to conduct machine learning with the use of artificial intelligence. This system made use of a graph database to store all of the results for every dataset run on it. If you're interested in following up on this framework, note that since its initial development, it has been renamed Aliro and is currently under active development. You can download and learn more about Aliro at the following GitHub repository. Beyond the AutoML tools I've just mentioned, there are a number of popular AutoML tools that have emerged over the last seven years or so. Here I've listed some of the better known tools, along with their respective GitHub links. These tools differ primarily in terms of what parts of the pipeline they automate, as well as what they give you after running, and what coding language or set of machine learning packages were used to assemble them. Before we move on to Streamline, I think it's important to acknowledge the current limitations and risks of AutoML methods in general, some of which we try and address with Streamline. First off, current AutoML methods typically focus on finding and returning a single best model to the user. Two potential drawbacks here are that ensembles of models may ultimately be the most effective solution for a specific problem. And by focusing on the single algorithm and respective model that yielded the best performance, there's also a lost opportunity to learn from the perspectives of multiple machine learning algorithms, which as we've discussed, each have their own assumptions and biases in approaching a new problem. Also of note, not all elements of an analysis pipeline that we've covered can yet be reliably or effectively automated. In other words, some of these elements still require human intelligence and expertise to conduct. These include aspects of data cleaning, feature engineering, the identification of sources of bias in data or models, and model interpretation. To date, I think it's safe to say that the best machine learning analysis still employs domain knowledge and human experts as part of the process. Another drawback to AutoML is that it can be very computationally expensive. It can be expensive enough just to train some individual algorithms on some large target dataset using a hyperparameter sweep. So you can imagine how quickly the compute time could add up as an algorithm explores a variety of ways to put all the pieces of a pipeline together. Ultimately, the field of AutoML and machine learning in general is relatively new, and we still have a lot to learn and discover. And any AutoML tool will be limited by the specific algorithms and heuristics that it employs. In some ways, AutoML could end up being the ultimate black box, and I would argue that we'd be careful not to trade convenience for understanding with respect to what's going on under the hood. With all of that in mind, I'll end this video series talking about a new open source and freely available AutoML tool called Streamline, introduced this year by my research group. Streamline is an acronym for Simple, Transparent, End-to-End -end Automated Machine Learning Pipeline. The purpose of introducing Streamline here is to give all of you an accessible way to try out machine learning as part of a data analysis pipeline that covers much of what we learned about in this series. The first release of Streamline came out earlier this year, and we're actively expanding and improving the software. So if you're interested in using it or following its development, make sure to star this repository at the GitHub link at the bottom of this page. We'll see this link again. Anyone can use the Streamline framework to easily try out machine learning as part of an end-to-end -end analysis pipeline, regardless of coding experience. We've set up Streamline so that it can be run at a high level by anyone, even if you don't know anything about computer programming or have any practical experience with machine learning. The software comes with a demonstration dataset that you can use to easily give the software a try, or you can go to the link I'll provide later to view the output and results that Streamline generates on this demonstration dataset to learn more about what you can get from a machine learning pipeline like this. You can, of course, also use Streamline to easily run custom analyses on your own data. 
and more knowledgeable users can apply it with many additional options to provide flexibility, for example, to parallelize Streamline for larger scale analyses or adapt the underlying code to suit any other specific needs of the user, including adding your own new machine learning algorithm to compare to those already implemented in the software. Furthermore, for those who want to learn more about coding together the building blocks of a machine learning analysis pipeline, Streamline's organized and commented code makes it an educational resource in itself. So now let's look at an overview of the Streamline software itself. As mentioned, Streamline is an automated machine learning analysis pipeline that in its first implementation is currently limited to binary classification problems. This is only because assembling a comprehensive pipeline for just one outcome type alone was a major challenge in itself. At the time of this video's recording, we're currently expanding Streamline to be able to operate on both multi-class and regression data sets as well. But of course, for an end-to-end -end pipeline, this includes adding new elements to almost all aspects of the pipeline, from data pre-processing to what machine learning algorithms and associated hyperparameters are applicable, and what metrics, statistical significant tests, and results visualizations to include for the other two outcome types. But in the meantime, you can at least try out Streamline on any tabular data set if you binarize your outcome. In developing Streamline, our goal was to make an automated pipeline that sought to cover and automate as broad a range of data science elements as possible, taking a user from their initial formatted data all the way through the process to generating a summary report highlighting key results from the analysis as a whole with summary statistics, statistical significance evaluations, and results visualizations. We wanted this pipeline to conduct a machine learning analysis in a rigorous as well as transparent manner, reporting every aspect of what goes on inside the pipeline and giving the user actionable output every step of the way. While there's certainly more we plan to do in the future, Streamline currently automates the following elements of a typical machine learning analysis pipeline. And these include exploratory analysis, data processing, feature processing, modeling, summarizing the analysis with a wide range of performance metrics, conducting significance analyses, figure generation, and composing a PDF report of how the pipeline was run and summarizing key results throughout all elements of the process. Furthermore, everything produced by Streamline is ultimately saved and organized in an experiment folder for each new analysis. In assembling Streamline, we sought to adopt what we considered to be best practices in machine learning analysis, as we've covered in this video series. And while the software comes with default settings, such that a user can more or less click a button and run everything with reasonable confidence, it's also set up with flexibility, customizability, and expandability in mind. Three other critical goals we had in assembling Streamline was that the pipeline should be able to deal with a variety of common data challenges, such as mixed feature types, missing data, and imbalanced data. And it should allow for scalable use in situations where a user had a large or very large set of data to analyze. And lastly, it was important for this pipeline not to sacrifice the ability to detect and be able to interpret complex associations, such as epistasis or heterogeneity. All of these priorities are in line with the needs of biomedical data science, as well as many other domains of machine learning application. Before looking under the hood of Streamline, let's review the ways it can be used. You can use it to compare the performance of a variety of well-known and novel machine learning algorithms on a given data set. In other words, what algorithm performs best on a target problem? You can also use it to easily compare machine learning performance across multiple target data sets. For example, comparing separate data sets that include different feature subsets. Perhaps if you want to see if genetic features are more informative than features previously extracted from images, such as x-rays or MRI scans. Or perhaps comparing a data set that includes or does not include covariate features to assess the impact of these covariates. Further, once you've trained models with Streamline, it's set up to quickly and easily apply and evaluate these trained models on other future data, including replication data, perhaps from a different geographic region or hospital, or to evaluate how one or all of your models would perform as a clinical decision support tool. Furthermore, while we do not currently make the claim that Streamline is better than any other AutoML tool, we do believe that it can serve as a baseline of comparison to evaluate other existing and emerging AutoML tools. 
in particular, those that seek to output a single best model. While Streamline is comprehensive in what it automates, it isn't really doing anything particularly sophisticated in terms of pipeline optimization. Instead, it's just automating what a machine learning practitioner might assemble to conduct a rigorous comparison of machine learning approaches that follows best practices, is mindful of possible complex associations in data, and can be scaled up to larger data sets, as well as seeking to understand the models being trained. And lastly, as previously indicated, Streamline can serve as an educational resource for those looking for conceptual and coding examples of how to design their own custom machine learning analysis pipeline. Okay, so now let's look under the hood of Streamline. Streamline was coded in Python and relies heavily on Python packages such as scikit-learn and pandas. Here's a schematic detailing the flow of data through the pipeline and all key elements it includes and automates. We've separated this pipeline into four conceptual components, data preparation, feature importance and feature selection, machine learning modeling, and post-analysis, largely in line with how we laid out the elements of machine learning analysis pipeline in this video series. The only major difference here is that we've separated feature selection from data preparation as its own distinct component to better illustrate the logistics of this pipeline's flow, as well as to emphasize the importance of feature selection, in particular when dealing with large-scale data. Now let's walk through the elements automated by Streamline in the order they're applied. As input, a user points Streamline to a folder with one or more datasets in it. If there's more than one dataset, Streamline will run the entire pipeline on each dataset and then end by conducting further analyses comparing model performance between these individual datasets. All input datasets should have the same basic format described at the link below. Next, data preparation begins first with exploratory analysis. Here, Streamline gathers some key information about the dataset, both as a summary for the user, as well as for directing how certain aspects of the pipeline will function downstream. This includes the dimensions of the dataset, i.e. the number of instances and features, as well as automatic differentiation of categorical versus quantitative features, with an optional override allowing the user to specifically indicate what features should be treated as categorical. Exploratory analysis also assesses missing value counts for features in the data and the degree of class balance or imbalance. Notably, with respect to feature types in the data, Streamline treats different feature types uniquely all the way up until modeling. However, during modeling, it should be noted that many of the machine learning algorithms, which have been implemented in scikit-learn, treat all features as being quantitative, which may not be ideal. We plan to add one hot encoding in a future version, but as of the current beta 0.2.5 release, some users may wish to apply one-hot encoding as a form of feature engineering prior to running Streamline. Additionally, during exploratory analysis, Streamline generates a feature correlation heat map and conducts appropriate univariate analyses between each individual feature in the dataset and outcome based on the feature type. This includes a relevant statistical test of association, as well as the generation of either a bar or box plot for categorical or quantitative features respectively. We'll see examples of these outputs later in this video. Next, we move on to data cleaning, which admittedly is automated here in an extremely simple way, removing any instances in the data with a missing outcome or allowing users to specify features in the data that should be excluded in the downstream analysis, for example, to avoid data leakage. As we covered, a lot more can go into data cleaning, but to date, most of these decisions are best left to human beings with domain knowledge. Missing data imputation, another part of data cleaning we've discussed, will happen at the end of the data preparation phase, for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. Next, we move on to partitioning our dataset using k-fold cross-validation, where k-training and k-testing datasets are generated. By default, Streamline uses balanced cross-validation to keep the proportion of cases and controls similar within each partition. However, it also includes the matched cross-validation option for datasets where matched cases and controls need to be kept together within the same partitions. From here until the completion of modeling, all subsequent elements will be conducted for each of the K partitions, with the K test sets left out of all learning or decision-making until we use them to evaluate model performance at the end of modeling. Next, we move on to feature transformation. 
While we covered a number of possible ways to transform features to facilitate downstream modeling, our goal here is simply to ensure that all features have their values centered around zero and are scaled to unit variance. This is to ensure that the algorithms we mentioned in part 3b of this series can train effectively and or be able to interpret internal feature importance estimations. How the data is scaled is based only on the respective training sets so that no information is gleaned from the test set. But this same transformation is applied to both the training and testing partitions respectively, since the testing data needs to be processed in the same way as the training data in order for the model to be applied properly. And last in data preparation, we have the imputation of missing data values. Here, simple mode imputation is applied for categorical variables. But for quantitative variables, users have the choice of simple mean imputation for large-scale data or more sophisticated multiple iterative imputation. As with feature transformation, the imputation decision-making is learned just from the training data, then applied to both training and testing data to avoid testing data leakage. Next, Streamline moves on to feature importance evaluation and feature selection. We group these elements here as one larger component of the pipeline since they're intertwined in the main goal of completing feature selection, but they're independently valuable. Previously in part 3b, we learned about filter-based, wrapper-based, and embedded feature selection methods. Since for large-scale data, it can be computationally impractical to run many machine learning algorithms, it is practical to employ faster filter-based feature selection to eliminate irrelevant features or simply to limit the number of features passed into machine learning based on some user-defined maximum. The feature importance element of Streamline applies two different filter-based feature selection methods with complementary strengths and weaknesses. Mutual information is a filter method that effectively detects univariate associations, while multi-surf is one of the relief-based algorithms we discussed in part 3b that is sensitive even to features involved in a pure interaction effect with some other feature or features. Streamline outputs the ranked feature scores for each method. Then when it comes to feature selection, Streamline adopts a collective feature selection approach, keeping the union of features identified by being relevant by either mutual information or multi-surf. The user also has the option to set some feature size limit, keeping only the top X features identified in the rankings of either algorithm. At this point, Streamline removes any features selected as irrelevant from both the training and testing sets. And this brings us to the modeling component of the pipeline. Currently, Streamline has the following 15 scikit-learn compatible machine learning algorithms included, of which the user can decide to apply anywhere from one to all of them. Again, within each individual cross-validation training partition, and for each algorithm the user selects to be applied, Streamline follows the following steps. First, it conducts a hyperparameter optimization sweep using the Optuna package, which employs a smart sweep with Bayesian optimization. Here, Streamline further partitions each training set into threefold training and validation subsets in line with nested cross-validation, which we covered in part 3a. Streamline is pre-programmed to explore an appropriate range of potentially important hyperparameters and value options or ranges for each, based on our assessment of best practices used in various publications and hyperparameter optimization tutorials. This takes the worry of picking and choosing values for hyperparameter sweep out of the user's hands. However, more advanced users can always update the code of Streamline to modify the set of hyperparameters or their values for each algorithm. All Streamline users do have control over the number of sweep attempts and the maximum runtime for the sweep as a whole. Once the sweep is complete, the optimal hyperparameters are selected for a given combination of algorithm and training partition. Once the sweep is complete and the optimal hyperparameters are selected for a given combination of algorithm and training partition, a final optimized model is trained using the entire respective training partition, ultimately yielding K models for each algorithm run. Next, Streamline gathers feature importance scores again. However, this time, their feature importance estimated for each trained model, rather than being independent filter algorithm estimates, as we saw over here in feature importance. By default, 
Streamline estimates model feature importance values for all applied algorithms in the same way, using permutation feature importance as discussed in part 3b of this video series. However, users also have the option to be returned the internal model feature importance estimates for any algorithm that can generate them, and use permutation estimates for those that cannot. And the last element in modeling is to evaluate the performance of all trained models using the respective testing datasets. For this, Streamline calculates all standard classification metrics we covered in part four of this video series. Furthermore, Streamline automatically generates ROC and PRC plots, calculating area under the curve for each and plotting performance for each of the K partitions, as well as average ROC and PRC curves over all partitions. Next, Streamline moves on to post-analysis, geared towards the summary of all analyses so far and interpretation of the results and models. Here, Streamline calculates averages, medians, and standard deviations for all classification metrics and model feature importance estimates. It also automatically conducts statistical comparisons between all algorithms for each evaluation metric. And it generates a variety of additional visualizations, including ROC and PRC plots, comparing average curves across all algorithms. And composite feature importance plots, which we'll illustrate later. And further box plots of evaluation metrics and feature importances over all partitions for every algorithm. All metric values and figures are organized and saved in a user-specified experiment folder. And lastly, Streamline conveniently creates a pre-formatted PDF summary highlighting run settings and key findings from all aspects of the pipeline. This provides a quick and easy first look record at the results of a Streamline analysis ready to be shared with colleagues and collaborators. The final element of Streamline is focused on replication or applying the trained models in practice. Streamline automatically saves all models, feature transformations, and imputation directives as pickled objects for smaller storage and easy reloading. Streamline also includes code to quickly apply all models trained in the pipeline to some new holdout replication data to further evaluate the generalizability of all trained models. Now on the same exact holdout set rather than on respective testing sets alone. Similarly, Formatted PDF summaries are also produced for any application of all models to some new holdout replication data. While there's already a lot automatically built into Streamline, there are obviously many other things that could be added to benefit the analysis of specific datasets, and we have a number of expansions planned for the future. While a number of amazing people were involved in the development of Streamline, myself and Robert Zhang, pictured here, did the bulk of the implementation. And feedback from the following investigators at the University of Pennsylvania, and Fox Chase Cancer Center was pivotal in refining the pipeline as a whole. So if Streamline seems interesting to you so far, stick around and the remaining slides will cover other logistics of how to use it and provide example figure outputs on the included demonstration data. The first thing to note is that Streamline has four different run modes to suit different levels of computational expertise. The first is running Streamline as a notebook with Google Collaboratory. This is the easiest option that doesn't require any programming knowledge nor any extra steps to set up your computing environment. You can also view algorithm outputs in the notebook as they're generated. However, this is the slowest option. The second mode is to run Streamline as a pre-built Jupyter notebook. This is also easy as it requires no programming experience, but you will have to install Anaconda, Python, and some other packages in your local computing environment. As with Google Colab, you can view algorithm outputs in the notebook as they're generated. The third mode is to run Streamline locally on your command line, which can be a bit easier to customize if you're already familiar with running code from the command line. And the last run mode is to use Streamline from the command line on a parallel computing cluster. In the current release, this is set up only for certain Linux-based compute clusters, but a code-savvy user should be able to adapt Streamline to be able to run in parallel on other types of computing clusters, including cloud computing. We aim to provide support and expansions to Streamline in the future so that parallelization is an option for all users. For a complete user's guide to Streamline, including installation instructions, check out the GitHub repository at this link. You can also scan this QR code on the right to quickly access this link. Of note, the current version of Streamline at the time of recording this video is beta 0.2.5. If you want to use Streamline, check that you're using the newest available release 
and follow the most up-to-date instructions for installation and use at this link. Let's also review the main outputs of Streamline. If you ran Streamline in either Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook, you can track and view the pipeline outputs within the notebooks themselves. Furthermore, as mentioned earlier, all results, figures, dataset partitions, and pickled objects will be organized into an experiment output folder specified by the user. And included in this folder will be the automatically generated PDF summary report of the analysis. As mentioned earlier, if you'd like to take a look at the output generated by Streamline on the included demonstration data, you can check out this link by scanning the QR code on the right. Here we've ran two datasets making up the demonstration, which I'll be describing on the next slide. In the output folder, we have a folder comparing the results of the two different datasets and a folder corresponding to the name of each dataset with all dataset specific files in each. Also, at the highest level of the experiment folder, you'll find the PDF summary, as well as some high-level information that has been pickled, and a CSV file documenting all Streamline parameters used in this experiment. As a demonstration dataset for Streamline, we use the hepatocellular carcinoma, or HCC, survival dataset taken from the UCI machine learning repository of benchmark datasets. You can find this dataset in this path within the Streamline repository. So why did we pick this dataset as the demo? First of all, it's a small dataset, so it's quick to run as an example and test that you have Streamline up and running correctly in whatever mode you chose. Also, it represents a biomedical classification task where we're trying to classify labeled instances in the data as having either survived or become deceased after one year. This data also exemplifies many of the dataset considerations or challenges we might have to deal with in real world problems, including a mix of categorical and quantitative features. Also, about 10% of the values in the dataset have missing values. And lastly, this dataset is imbalanced with 63 deceased instances and 102 instances who survived. Now let's take a brief tour of just a selection of the many figures automatically generated in running Streamline. First, for the exploratory analysis phase, it generates bar or box plots of univariate analyses. Here we have a bar plot showing the relationship between one of the categorical features and our binary outcome. Here we have a histogram summarizing the number of missing values found in features across the dataset. And here we have a heat map of feature correlations within the data. This can be particularly useful when deciding whether to remove highly correlated features from the data, or when interpreting model feature importance estimates downstream, which can be thrown off when highly correlated features remain in the data. Next, from the feature importance estimation and feature selection component, we have ranked feature importance scores averaged over all training partitions. Results for the mutual information method are on the left, and results for the multi-surf method are on the right. Moving on to the modeling phase, the Optuna package facilitates the generation of these parallel coordinate plots as a way to visualize the results of a hyperparameter sweep, with different hyperparameters along the x-axis and possible values for each along the y, with darker blue lines indicating a better average performance for some specific combinations of hyperparameter values than others. Moving on to model summary and evaluation, we have ROC and PRC plots. Here we have the summary ROC plot comparing average algorithm ROC curves over all cross-validation models trained, giving us a quick way to compare overall algorithm performance. Similarly, we have PRC summary plots, with the no skill line being automatically set by the class balance of the data. Also, as mentioned earlier, different ROC and PRC plots are created for each individual algorithm showing curves for each of the cross-validation models alongside the average curve for that algorithm. Furthermore, in post-analysis, when it comes to model feature importance, Streamline generates a fairly unique plot that we're calling a composite feature importance plot. This takes the normalized and median weighted feature importances across all machine learning modeling algorithms and combines them into a single visualization. This weighting is based on a single model evaluation metric, which can be either balanced accuracy or area under the ROC curve. These plots allow for a more holistic look at feature importance consensus or disagreement across all machine learning algorithms, weighted by how well those respective algorithms actually performed. So in this example, the feature importance scores of our learning classifier system extracts are given in green, and we can see that it thinks a few features are more important than let's say an artificial neural network, 
whose feature importance scores are given in red. In addition to these plots, box plots of evaluation metrics and feature importance scores for each individual algorithm are also generated by Streamline. Also, in post-analysis, we can generate direct model visualizations for two of the algorithms in Streamline. The first are decision trees. The user can directly generate visualizations of any or all decision tree models trained. And the same goes for genetic programming models, which similarly can be illustrated as trees that represent mathematical functions as models. And the last output we'll mention here is produced whenever Streamline is run on two or more datasets at once. Here, we're comparing performance between datasets with box plots. This first box plot gives the average ROC area under the curve for each algorithm as box plot values for both datasets. Here's the first dataset and the second. On top of the box plots, we've overlaid a trend in average ROC area under the curve going from one dataset to the next. So for example, we can see that decision trees work better in the first dataset than in the second. Additionally, a similar box plot can be generated comparing ROC area to the curve across all cross-validation models generated by a single algorithm. So in this case, we have support vector machines as our target algorithm. And we're comparing the 10 cross-validation partition runs on one dataset versus the other for support vector machines. This can potentially be a more reliable look at performance differences between two or more datasets focusing just on the top performing single algorithm. Now that we've previewed a sampling of the many streamlined output visualizations, let's look at a couple of additional dataset comparison experiments we conducted in a published preprint describing this algorithm and software in detail at the bottom of this page. In this first dataset comparison plot, we applied streamline to a set of six datasets with different underlying patterns of association, as can be seen here. In the first, there's a simple, noisy, univariate association with outcome. In the second, there's an additive, noisy association involving four features with additively univariate effects. In the third, there are four noisy, univariate effects that are heterogeneously associated with outcome, meaning that each association is only relevant in some independent partition of the data instances. The fourth data set includes a pure, noisy, two-way epistatic interaction. The fifth involves two separate, pure, noisy, two-way interactions that are also heterogeneously associated with outcome. And the last data set involves a pure, noisy, three-way epistatic interaction. And we can see in this comparison plot that all algorithms do similarly well on the first two data sets. However, with the introduction of univariate heterogeneity, we observe a broader distribution of algorithm performance. And once we get to pure two-way interactions, suddenly there is a dramatic performance difference between algorithms, with logistic regression, naive Bayes, and decision trees all performing no better than random chance. And our lab's own rule-based machine learning algorithm extracts and category gradient boosting, or cat boost, performing the best. In the two remaining datasets, we still see a large spread in algorithm performance, with decreased overall performance as the problems get sequentially more difficult. One exciting thing for our research group to observe here was the high performance of rule-based machine learning compared to all other algorithms in each of these simulated scenarios. One last experiment I'll share here applies Streamline to a set of six increasingly difficult X-bit multiplexer problems. These are classic computer science benchmark problems that have been used to evaluate rule-based machine learning algorithms since the 80s. All of these problems involve both feature interactions and heterogeneity, and increase in complexity as X gets bigger, from 6 bits all the way up to 135 bits. As can be seen in this streamlined comparison, only a subset of machine learning algorithms are able to completely solve even the simplest of the multiplexer problems. While it's possible to model all of these datasets with 100% testing accuracy, only Streamline achieved perfect performance up to the 36-bit variation, and it continued to have good performance through the 70-bit variation. All algorithms failed to solve the 135-bit version. However, in this example, there aren't enough training instances in the 135-bit dataset we used for any algorithm to properly generalize. We've actually shown in previous published work that extracts, given in green, can solve the 135-bit multiplexer given sufficient data. 
further demonstrating the power of rule-based models to capture extremely complex patterns in data. We'll end this video series with some big picture takeaways. First, machine learning is all about getting machines to learn from data faster and better than human beings can. Next, the field of machine learning includes a huge array of methods with varying goals, strengths, and weaknesses. So as a rule of thumb, always use more than one method whenever possible. Also, data preparation often plays a huge role in the success or failure of downstream machine learning modeling. And machine learning pitfalls can lead to failed or poor learning performance, as well as invalid results or conclusions. Additionally, automated machine learning is an exciting new area of research and development, aiming to make machine learning easier and more rigorous in its application. And lastly, Streamline is an automated machine learning tool that integrates many of the topics we've covered in this series, and it's a great way to quickly and easily try out machine learning for yourself, as well as to see how a machine learning pipeline can actually be coded in practice. Thank you for joining me for part 10 of Machine Learning Essentials for Biomedical Data Science. This was the last video in the series, but keep a lookout for new educational videos, software tutorials, lectures, and research talks as we post them in the future. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. If you enjoyed this video or video series, please like and subscribe to follow my future content.